Hi, I'm, I'm Hank Lynch. I'm the CEO of Reston Association. We're down here at the boat launch on Lake Thoreau, and I've asked uh, Larry Butler, our chief operating officer, and, and, and someone who's been managing these lakes for well over 20 years, to help, help me understand why we're having such a, a severe algae bloom this year, why the hydrilla has um, gotten into the lakes and why it's impacting you know, our boating, and uh, actually just to share with me some of the realities uh, and the facts, are, are we having fish kills? Have we seen turtle losses? You know, the severity of it. So my first question, Larry, is, is you've been managing the lakes for well over 20 years, is that? Well over. And this is not the first time we've had a, a pretty severe algae bloom, is it? We have algae blooms almost every year, not every year on Lake Throw. There was a small algae bloom last year, though, on Lake Throw. Um, when conditions are right, regardless of the lake, You've got the right amount of nutrients, phosphorus and nitrogen primarily, and you've got ample sunlight and heat, which certainly we had that in July with what, right. 23 or so days over 90 degrees. It creates a situation that's ripe for an algae bloom. And the blue-green algae that's in the lake now, it has a competitive advantage over all the other algae species that are in the lake all the time. You just don't see them. The blue-green algae, they fix atmospheric nitrogen. So they have a competitive advantage. If there's adequate phosphorus in the lake from runoff, fertilizers, you know, roadway runoff and things like that, blue-green can outcompete all the other algae in the lake because they take nitrogen, which is the other main nutrient, and they, they bloom when those conditions are right. And so that's what happened here. And in this situation, it came right on the heels of us treating for hydrilla which in and of itself is a, you know, one of the most invasive, exotic aquatic plants in the country. Just kind of take me back, how did the hydrilla originally get into the lake? It just happened? I mean, people boating so, in other places, bringing it here? Or? Hydrilla is, you know, it's such an aggressive plant. That it, it could have come in here through the digestive system of a waterfowl. Somebody that was on the Potomac or some other place that had hydrilla came in and it might have been on their electric motor prop or on the bottom of their boat. There's yeah. lots of ways it can get in here. And once it gets in, it establishes really quickly. It, it can grow inches per day. You know, if it breaks off, those fragments can then reroute. So it, it, again, it has a competitive advantage over the native plants that we want to have in the lake. Yeah. Did, um, and, and we treat it, you said on July 29th, I know we, we treat it. That's, that's with, with a, a, an aquatic herbicide, right? Right, yeah. Our, our contractor, Aquatic Environment Consultants, who's also done our water quality monitoring for years, has a, an excellent data set on all, all four of our lakes. They came in and treated their certified applicators for aquatic herbicides. They did not treat all the hydrilla. I mean, what we're trying to do is achieve a balance. So for water bodies in the kind of mid-Atlantic region, you're really trying to get 20 to 30 percent of the uh, you know, the, the surface of the bottom with aquatic plants. I've gotten some emails sharing with me that we've seen fish kill and turtle kill. Have any of the aquatic staff, as they've you know, been investigating, I think almost on a daily basis. Right, yeah, Will and Garrett are out all the time. And again, I was out yesterday evening, went around a good, good bit of the lake, didn't see one dead fish, didn't see a dead turtle. The hydrilla has basically been, the herbicide has killed it off, it's settling to the bottom now. So that's correct. That problem is kind of going away. When can we expect the, uh, the algae bloom? You know, two to three weeks, they typically run their course. So it's safe to say that there's really no treatment we should be doing right now to the algae, just let it run its course. Right, yeah, so um, in fact, Aquatic Environment Consultants was out doing their water quality monitoring on Monday, and then uh, our watershed staff also um, did a little bit of sampling. And the concern that we have if, if we were to come in and treat this algae right now, if they were to die back quickly, we might get a severe oxygen depletion. That would kill the fish. That could, that could kill the fish. So you have to be kind of nimble in your response to those things. And, and we've tried to be nimble through the years, uh, you know, using grass carp. We're gonna look at that. There's a couple other things we're looking at as well, you know, particularly for Lake Throat, because it has the most water of any of the lakes and it has a relatively small watershed at 400 acres versus Lake Audubon, which is you know 1,600 acres, which includes Lake Throw. So uh, we're looking at perhaps um, an alum treatment, aluminum sulfate, which actually precipitates out the phosphorus, so they're, they're, for lack of a better word, binded 
yeah. into the, the sediment so that during that anaerobic or lack of oxygen decomposition process, which typically releases phosphorus, that would not happen. So we're, we're investigating that as well and, and what the cost might be for that. And that might be something we do next year. Possibly. Yeah, we have to look at the cost and there's a fair amount of analysis with the throughput of water for doing that. It wouldn't work in Lake Audubon because Lake Audubon it basically replaces its water in a matter of weeks, whereas Lake Throw is a matter of months because of the small watershed. So those are some of the things we're looking at. So just so I can understand, the recommendation is not to treat anything right now to, to do anything with the algae bloom because in, in doing so, killing off the algae could basically take out more oxygen out of a, of a lake and that could result in killing a lot of the fish and other wildlife that we, you know, turtles or whatever, in the lake. And while we say don't swim in the lake, some people have been known to do so, we're encouraging right now while the algae bloom is there not to swim in the lake, not that's, to get in the water. That's correct. Yeah, when I, was out, when I was out on the lake last night, I saw a couple people swimming and I'm like, you know, not a good time to swim. Yeah. And you shouldn't be swimming anyways. Well, Larry, thank you. This has been very informative. It's helped me a lot to uh, understand what's actually going on. And, and you know, I, I know a lot of our, our rest in members are very concerned about our lakes, and I would encourage anyone who's got any additional concerns or uh, wants more information to reach out either to myself or to Larry. Uh, we're both available through email and through our, our phones. Uh, so thank you, Larry, and, and thank you for bringing me up to speed on what's You're going welcome. on. Always love talking about lakes. Yeah.